The Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want him. Make I lie down in a green pasture. Yes, him lead that I beside still water them. Him restored I soul. Him lead that I another part of I trust not for him name's sake. Yeah! Though I rust, I go walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I can't fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff, them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before I in the presence of our enemy, them. Uno anointed I head with no oil, me cup runner to over. Surely, goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I, Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja! Kadama we groma be a tela e. Higzag beer! Tana istalina ba shante, 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 shante. Kadama we groma be a tela e. Where two sentries meet in the name of the most high Jah. Uh, that's so Jaja de. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder I go build it in vain. Same way if Jaja never watch upon your house. The watchman I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and then be saved. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But Jah shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks and I say unto your name, King of kings and Lord of lords. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amasa Yahuda, Yahuda, Amasa Negusto, Negusto, Daniel. Koma Yasataya. I'm a na pio 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 aya. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rastana. In every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there's something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes abandon and relegate all their differences into the corners, and they collaborate to produce food. Differences of color, shape, size, aroma, and even flavor. In the aftermath, food is produced from that collaboration. Ironically, the ingredients at the black pot do not even participate in the eating of the food. It is us, the eaters, who do. Yet every time, the ingredients and the black pot will collaborate to make food. It's a lesson of selflessness. It's a lesson of sacrifice. A lesson of generational thinking. Any country that is not sacrificial is not deserving of being called a country by a, an empty box. In our nation, it's all about sacrifice. If we do not sacrifice, we will never be able to make it to the top. That is why we are on a 16 regional tour of Ghana, the whole Ghana. We are going to all the 16 regions of Ghana. Already we have done four regions in two weeks. We have been to the Upper West region. We have also been to the Upper East region. In the Upper West region, we talked to two schools. And we went on radio and also spoke to the whole of the region. We went to Wa Secondary School. We also went to the Great Tongo Secondary Technical in the Upper East region. We went to Wasek. We also went to Wasek Tech and ended up at the Big Boss, Bolgatanga Secondary School. Everywhere we went, the students said they wanted more. Everywhere we went, we saw students cry. Everywhere we went, we saw the enthusiasm to build Ghana again. We are raising a new generation of patriots. It's because of the lack of patriotism. That is why our nation continues to go down. It's because of the lack of patriotism. That is why nothing is working in the country. Anybody who does not believe in patriotism does not believe it in anything. We are changing the mindset of our people. If the mindset remains the same, no president, no leader would ever succeed in this country. You can build all the schools. You can build all the schools, all the roads. Individuals will steal and destroy that. When we went to Tamale, we realized that the Tamale Sports Stadium, one of its kind, Tamale people go to the stadium 
to steal the stadium seats to take their homes and sit down to prepare to Ozafi. It's the lack of patriotism that will make a man go to such a public outfit and steal a stadium chair, take to his house. For what? And the newly built overhead in Tamale. Tamale people are stealing electricity, bulbs, and so on and so forth from that place. When you come to Accra, in fact, the barricades in the middle of our double roads, people are cutting them, stealing them, and selling as scraps. Our bridges have been taken over by traders. It's all the lack of patriotism. The mindset is very bad. Our streets are choked. Traffic all over the place. All because traders have left the markets and have turned the streets into markets. Do you see this in America? Common sense. Do you see this in Canada? Where traders are supposed to be is the marketplace. Now if they leave the market and come on the streets, it means that drivers and pedestrians are helping them to remain on the streets. And it's the same drivers who will complain that, oh, and uh, our streets have been taken over by traders and they are causing traffic. It's because we don't have the common sense. If we had the common sense, my brother, no driver will buy anything from the streets. Don't buy water from the water sellers. Anybody who comes to beg for money on the street, don't give it to them. You will keep beggars on the street. Do not buy ice cream on the street. Do not buy anything on the streets. The more you buy from the streets, the more you keep them there. And when your cars fail bricks, you will kill some of them. It's common sense. The mindset of the people must change. When we steal from the government, we believe that we have the right to actually pilfer after all the government. The money going to the government is our own money. Yet your government is always going out there to borrow when you have gold, diamond, bauxite and the rest. What does this tell you? The mindset is wrong. This is where we rewire the minds of our people. It's called a black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Last week, we were right there inside Kalpohin SHS. And the students were so excited to see us. We were supposed to go to the Ghana Secondary School. They agreed. Everything was set. An hour to the event, they told us they had had a message from above and that we needed to seek permission from the regional directorate and even Accra. Some of the schools are not allowing us to come there for obvious reasons. Some of the headmasters are scared that Black Rasta will come there and say things that will put them into trouble. And some politicians are also standing in our way. They do not want us to go in there and then share knowledge with the people. But we are making it in our own way. Every region we go, by all means, by hook or crook, we will speak to the students. We will go on radio and speak and possibly go onto the market space and even on the streets. We have a large speaker, very big one, mobile one, that we take and then we play our music and then we also speak to the people. We went to Nalergu Senior High School and they didn't have a very good public address system. We brought our own public address system, fixed it there and boom, the whole place was on fire. The students were so excited. You could tell that they haven't heard such quality sound in a long while. And it was a beautiful time. Our intention is to be able to raise a new generation of patrons. The response has been overwhelming by the kind courtesy of you and you and you. Those of you who keep donating money to us every now and then. We are not counting on the big companies. A lot of them will not come on now. Some will come on for political reasons. Others will come on when we are already flying and we might not need their support anymore. Whatever it is, you are those who are making the donations. As you can see some names there coming up. We are on the road every time. We will take a short break for the Easter because the schools will all be closed for the Easter. And when they return after a week, we will go back again. But this week, we shall be in the Savannah region. We'll go to Damongu, we'll go to Bole, and we'll be on the streets. 
doing our crusade. We are the crusaders of the time, the crusaders of patriotism. And in every school we have been to, we have been to uh, how many regions so far? We've been to two regions. Am I right? We have been to four solid regions. And we have spoken to more than seven schools. We are doing more. My brother, my sister, we have raised young patriots in every school. It's interesting. We are going to continue. We shall not stop. And we thank you for the support we get from you. Keep donating. It will never go to waste. We will make sure that it's put into the right use. I want to say thank you. I appreciate you. We are live on YouTube and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media. Oh my God, have mercy. Yes, Black Empire Media. And I want to say thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, it's time to do that and hit on the notification button so that anytime we come on, you'll be the first person to see us. Now we have Doomsaw coming all over the place. So our time has shifted as to when Doomsaw comes in and out. And our first story today my brother, my sister, oh my God, it's an interesting story. I need you to open your eyes and ears and watch it. Come here, my youth. Give me the first story, my youth. Mahama said to jail corrupt officials. Mahama said to jail corrupt officials. Am I not happy about this? In the history of Ghana, politicians do not jail fellow politicians. It's like they are chess mates. They are partners in corruption, PICs. And for that matter, they don't hurt each other. When it's your tenure of office to steal, steal and go. When we come, we shall protect you. So when we steal, you also protect us. Mahama says that it is time to jail corrupt officials. This is the former president of the Republic of Ghana. He also served as a vice president of the Republic of Ghana. And he wants a second coming. Will Ghanaians give him the chance? Run the story, my youth. And this one is taken from Ghana Web. It says, Mahama to investigate looting of state lands if voted as president in 2024. Run it. Now, John Dramani Mahama, who is leading the National Democratic Congress, NDC, in the 2024 elections, has promised to look into the looting of lands in Ga Adangbe. He indicates that the Ga Adangbe state gave out lands to the state for specific projects, including the airport and the Supreme Court, amongst others. However, where lands are no longer going to be used to serve the purpose of which they were given out, the rule says they should be given back to the owners. John Dramani Mahama believes that a number of lands which were not being used for the purpose for which they were acquired by the government have been looted. And a commission of inquiry will en ensure that these lands are taken back and given to the Ga Adangwe people. When NDC comes into power, we are going to set up a commission of inquiry on Ga lands to make recommendations on what the government should do in respect of Ga Adangwe lands. And at the same time, it will also be investi we will also investigate looted state lands. This is what Mahama is saying. Wow! I am excited at this. Are you? Now, for some time now, Gamashi has become very angry to the point that some people are advocating that when people die, they should be taken to their hometowns to be buried. Only guns should be buried in Gamashi. And the reason is that there is a shortage of space in terms of land. Gamashi has given a lot of land for the capital. And Mahama has mentioned a few of them. Come here, my youth. When a people sacrifice so much and say, listen, we understand that the capital is here now. The Ga people are one of the most peaceful people in the world. Hey! It is only in Ga that you hardly hear Ga. You come to Accra and you tell yourself, this is the land where the Gans are. You will be shocked that for the next one month to six months, you will never hear one Ga. From the trot trot drivers, all the way down to their mates and taxi drivers, everybody is asking. 
Tessi, 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 Nungwa, Tessi, Nungwa, Ubeko, Ubeko, Ana, Ubeko, Ana. They are speaking languages that are not gang related. Why is Black Rasta bringing out this? It means they are a very tolerant people. There are so many ethnic groups in the capital and everybody has peace. The girls may have problems amongst themselves, but they do not worry other ethnic groups that are here. You will not see the girls fight the Zongos. You will not see the girls go all the way to Angloga to go and fight the Ewes. You will not see the girls going all the way after every other ethnic group, just as we see in Kumasi. Remember when Otun 4 came out and told us, that in Kumasi, you have all ethnic groups in Ghana and they've been given land and they are living in peace. And he cited examples of the Zongos. The Zongos even have their own chiefs. Angloga is parading airways in that area and they have Togbi there in Angloga in Kumasi. My brother, my sister, you don't ever hear that they have been attacked by the Ashantis in the region. That is the kind of tolerance I'm talking about. But there are some parts of Ghana where you go to and if you belong to a different ethnic group, aside the ethnic group that dominates the area, you are in trouble. Tribal wars, ethnic factions, and so on and so forth, disturbing our peace right here in Ghana and beyond. And if the gas, much as we believe they are violent and noisy, because of the boxing that they are so much interested in, and the few Shanty towns that we have around, belonging to the Ga people, all in all, they are most peaceful and at the same time so respectful and tolerant. For that matter, if they have been able to sacrifice for the forward motion of the nation by giving so many different pieces of land for the upliftment of the area, the land must be returned to them if they are not put into use to save the nation. What Mahama said is the truth. Now, aside investigating looted land, Mahama also said, and I would like to remind him, that when he comes into power, he's going to make sure that corrupt officials are punished. There would be an investigation into that as well. It's not enough to just return looted land. We have to look for corrupt officials, force them to return national money, and we will jail them on top. I would wish that the jail system is cancelled in Ghana. No jail houses. Turn all of them into four-star, five-star hotels. When somebody is jailed, you will sleep in a five-star hotel. But you would have a number of hours you can sleep. You go to the farm and work to feed the nation. Those of them who can work in factories and have some skills would work in those areas like they do abroad. So that they would only earn a small percentage of that money. Like 10% or 20%, 80% of all that they earn goes back to the state. It means you are making them productive whilst in jail. We won't lock you up and give you bad conditions, deteriorate your health, and still ask the doctors to come and take care of you using scarce national resources. At the same time, we will not put you in there and continue feeding you for free when free people need food as well. If I were president, the jail system in Ghana will end. Turn Insawam prison into Insawam International Hotel. Four-star hotel. When you are jailed in there, you have your own toilet, you have your own bath. They will train you into something. Maybe you are a cobbler, you are a shoemaker. Whatever you want to be trained into, if you have the acumen, they train you into it. And then you will go to work. Police will be with you. In fact, prison officers will be with you. Even in prison, you could build a factory. Take all of them out like we take them out to do work. Those who don't have any skill, they can go to the farm. Teach them how to work the land. Let them earn to feed the state. That is a proper jail system. Not where you lock them up, rotting up, feeding them, taking care of them medically, and at the end of a tenure, you say they should go out. It doesn't make sense. What have they done to help with the nation? They've only gone there to eat and sleep. Think about it. It is time to jail 
politicians. It is time to bring decency into the political system. We have a lot of rot. NDC is talking about how Nana Ado is so corrupt. And when you come into power, you can't find one reason to jail Nana Ado. You can't find one reason to jail Cecilia, whoever. I've forgotten the other name. And some other people. Cecilia Dapa, right? Yes, Cecilia Dapa. You must find reason for calling them corrupt. To be able to put them in there. The jailhouse must be made very, very, very productive. In that case, we are looking forward for punishment for all these corrupt officials. That is one way our nation would have decent politicians. In Malaysia, it was done. They started going after the top. From the president, all the way down, if you realize that your boss is being punished for a certain crime, you yourself, what would you think? Would you ever try it? We need this in the country. We need correct people and correct minds to work to move this country forward. We are not looking for charlatans and thieves. We are not looking for idiots who failed all their exams in school and they have just had a job in politics and they are making money. People who cannot even spell their names properly. They are in politics making money. Professors are there with nothing. Nurses are there with nothing. Teachers are there with nothing. And when teachers want to talk, they tell them their reward is in heaven. You deserve to have your reward here. But they should go to heaven before they have their re reward. Are we crazy? Mahama stands a good chance when he becomes president again. To crack the whip. And make people eulogize you. Mr. Mahama, bring his photo. Hear me now, Mr. Mahama. If you will listen to me as a brother and as a patriot, you have a very, very huge chance to write your dej, to write your obituary, full of legacies and a lot of cultural heritage. You have the chance for the last time as the president of the nation, to be able to make every little artist want to paint you on a wall. You have a chance to be able to match up in a way to Kwame Nkrumah's legacy. You have a chance to be able to keep Ghana corruption free. Close your eyes to all family and friends. Close your eyes to all square pegs in round holes. Close your eyes to all sorts of pluralism nepotism and open your eyes clearly to the corruption in every corner what is black rasta saying open your eyes only to the right things make sure things that are wrong are punished immediately justice delayed is justice denied mr mahama you stand a clear chance when you become president to turn this nation around in four years, you can do a lot. I'm glad you are telling the people that you will not rush into building national projects. You will go after the old ones and bring them up. That is enough. I'm glad you are not making unnecessary promises all over the place. Spend a lot of the time dealing with the mindset of the people. I am ready to be an ambassador. The mindset of the people. The minds of the people must change or else... You can build one trillion factories in Ghana. Thieving Ghanaians will go in there and steal products, including wires and bulbs, and bring everything down. But with patriotism, some workers might even take money from their pocket to buy a bulb for a socket that has lost one. Some of them will take money out of their pocket, in fact, to clean some rot in the area. But if there is no change of the mindset, it's all about looting. Think about it. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Come here, my youth. The next story I want to look at is very simple. Run it, my youth. Dumso officially back. Dumso is a Ghanaian term for erratic power supply. 
when Mahama was here, there was a very terrible doomsaw. They tried to be able to sort it out before they went out of power. This government came in and has been riding on the no doomsaw slogan. It was going quite well, quite well. We had problems left, right, and center. All of a sudden, doomsaw is coming back. What is the proof? Run it, my youth. Watch this. This man here, oh my God, he's a very powerful man. He is. He's talking. He's the ECG managing director and he bears the name of the former president, John Dramani Mahama. He's called Samuel Dubix Mahama. He's a lawyer. He is the managing director of the ECG. I like him. Sometimes he says things and I am proud to say that this is a man who is speaking out of his heart. ECG are less Ghanaians of peak hour outages. What is ECG? Electricity Company of Ghana. It used to be called Electricity Corporation. Now it's company. The difference you must know. It's no more a corporation. Government and everything is a company. My God have mercy. Now the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG, has announced power outages between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. across its operational zones, including uh, that indicating that rising demand has forced around 630 distribution transformers to operate at full capacity. Did you hear that? Should I take it again? The Electricity Company of Ghana has announced power outages between 7 and 11 p.m. across its operational zones, include indicating that rising demand had forced around 630 distribution transformers to operate at full capacity. Although the power distribution company did not specify the duration of the outages, it stated that the decision was made to prevent fuses from blowing and broken conductors, particularly uh, during peak demand hours. We wish to assure our customers that transformer upgrading and new projects are ongoing to relieve these transformers to ensure a more reliable power supply. Dash it away. So, <clears throat> Brother here, Samuel Dubix Mahama, is the managing director of the ECG. He doesn't want to lie. He wants to go straight to the point. But politically, he has to also be correct. So his party will look good. He is saying that between 7 and 11 p.m. every day, that is when we have electricity being used most. And it's natural. Because that is at night. All the bulbs in Ghana will switch on. All the street lights will switch on. And if you have stadia that are playing football, all the alarms will also be on. And right now, a lot of factories in Ghana are beginning to enjoy working at night when their gadgets and all their equipment will be cool when the sun has been swallowed by the darkness. For that matter, electricity consumption goes high. According to him, this makes fuses blow up and some other such things. They need to upgrade their 630 transformers across the area, Ghana. So the 630 transformers are working at full capacity. They were not supposed to. When you make something work at full capacity, you weaken it. For instance, if you have a machine here whose capacity is to pr produce 10 balls in one hour and you always make it do that, you will break it down quicker than when you make it produce maybe at half. You give room for longevity. That's what he's saying. For that matter, they are going to bring doom so. Between 7 and 11, these are the key times of the day. Mosquitoes, Enjoy flying at night. 
In some areas in Ghana, the mosquitoes are so disrespectful, even in the afternoon they are flying and biting. Places like Bolga, mosquitoes have no respect. You go to Navrongo, mosquitoes have no respect. When you go to Jamestown, mosquitoes have no respect. Some of them can even bite and open the mosquito net and get in there and bite you. When you go to Choco, mosquitoes have no respect. When you travel all the way to these areas, my brother, mosquitoes can be so disrespectful. And they are the causes of the most prevalent disease in Africa, malaria. A lot of our children are dying from malaria because of these disrespectful mosquitoes. But when there's electricity, mosquitoes don't like flying in the light. They like hiding in the night, in the darkness, like Nicodemus. My brother, my sister, for that matter, between 7 and 11 p.m., when the lights go off, mosquitoes will have a field day. Your fan is no longer working. Your air conditioners are not working anymore. And above all, the whole place is dark. Snakes and other reptiles might have a field day as well. Rodents who like to operate in the night will have a field day as well. It is a national disaster. So Doomso is officially back. Come here, my youth. But we are being told that it is a lie. According to Jinapo, the Jinapo who is with the NDC, the opposition party, I normally mix up their names. John Jinapo and Samuel Jinapo. I don't know the one who is with the NPP and the NDC. It doesn't matter too much to me. But I know one of them, the Jinapo brothers. One is with the NPP and the other one is with uh, the NDC. The one in opposition says that it is a lie. Now the truth about the thing is that they don't have money to buy gas. Number two, they are short of money to be able to run and serve the nation. So they are hiding under technical issues and problems to be able to reintroduce them so. So you see why I said that Dubik's Mahama likes to speak the truth, but he has to also be politically correct. correct. So which is which? Are you short of money to run the turbines? Or, truly, capacity has increased. Intake of power has increased. Therefore, you have to rise to the new occasion. My brother, my sister, they just increased electricity tariffs, increased water tariffs, and so on and so forth. Why do you not make use of the tariffs that you are getting from the electricity and the water. In some countries, they pay well. The tariffs are good enough for electricity and water, so they do not have excuses about water and electricity. I prefer that people will pay more for electricity and water so that we will not have excuses. Rather than pay small, small, and doom so, doom so, doom so, pseudo doom, doom so, like this will hurt us. But to make it worse, we are talking about our homes. We are talking about rodents and mosquitoes. But look at the bigger cause of doom so. Come here, my youth. Come here. ECG goes after Kolebu, 37 military hospital, Konfu Anochi teaching hospital, and others. Over 261 million deaths. How, by what magic? Do you expect ECG to be able to make money if all these institutions are not paying? Now they are going after the biggest hospitals in Ghana to collect their money so they can buy gas and do other things. Or else, like they did to the parliament house, they will turn them off the national grid. And when they do, you can imagine how many patients will visit early graves. Is sad. The Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG, has issued a final warning to 91 hospitals. How many hospitals do we have in Ghana? Across the country, as they are at risk of having their power supply severed due to a collective debt 
of 261 million Ghana cities. Now, the ECG's National Tax Force is set to enforce these connections if the outstanding amounts are not cleared within the next 48 hours, including the issuance of a demand notice. Run the list of the hospitals and how much they owe. Look at this. Volta Region owes 15 million, 163,879 Volta Region alone. Accra East Region, over 66 million Ghana cities. Ronit Mayut, over 66 million. Tema Region, 8 million plus. Ronit Mayut. And watch this. Accra West Region, over 55 million. Central Region, 21 million and over. All these hospitals owe. Eastern Region, 21 million and over. Ashanti Region, 50 million and over. Ghana cities. And the Western Region, is 22 million plus and when you check it out sda hospital quadra so is also part of it look at the hospitals bogosu hospital takrade hospital takwa government hospital takwa hospital apinto wasadunkwa hospital government hospital nswaim hospital kwesimin team hospital escado uh, government hospital elubo hospital uh akwantobra hospital all these are government hospitals they owe. Who is supposed to pay? Are the hospitals not making money? Health insurance is here. From when health insurance came, all these hospitals seem to be running bankrupt. We need to look at the health insurance. It's very important. And make sure that we don't cut our nose to spite our face. It's the blackboard. A.K.A. Kokushonamo. And here we speak truth to power. When we return, come here. We will be reading your messages. We have more. Hey! Wayo! The Blackport, a.k.a. Kukushonam, where we speak truth to power. That message goes out to Mahama. You saw our quote for the day? From Thomas Sankara, former president and leader, the best that nation has ever had, the land of the upright, Burkina Faso. My God. Thomas Sankara was a powerful president, a leader. Their nation has never had a leader like that. He refused to take anything from the IMF and the World Bank. He made sure that dry Burkina Faso was able to use irrigation to produce crops. And he fed Burkina Faso and even exported some part of the food. They realized that if they allowed him to go like this, Africa would learn from him and be truly independent economically. So they cut him down and killed him using his very own friend. Today his friend is in exile. The man who shot and killed him. All over Burkina Faso. He has his statues all over the place. And his photos all over the place. Thomas Sankara. That's what I was talking to Mahama about. He left a powerful legacy behind. In the few days that he was a leader. He changed the name of his country from O Volta. In other words, Upper Volta. To the land of the upright. He was envisioning a land where people would have a clear conscience, very strong conscience, where the mindset of the people would be upright. So he named his country 
in the Moshi language, Burchina Paso, the land of the upright. Who is an upright person? Somebody who moves away from anything that is corrupt, anything that is bad, and stays on the path of the righteous. That's an upright person. You saw that quote, right? What did the quote say? You cannot make fundamental change without some level of madness. If you want to change your nation, be ready to be called mad. If you want to be able to bring a fundamental change, what do we mean by fundamental change? To change an entrenched position. You are fundamentally degrading and shaking off and uprooting a certain foundation. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Fundamental change. Hey, Thomas Sankara, what a man. My brother, my sister, are we ready to be called the land of the upright? Are we ready to be called the land of the patriots? I am looking at a Ghana where British, Americans, Japanese, and Chinese will kill to be able to get a visa into this country. Where Ghanaians will be respected everywhere they go. Where Ghana will not be begging for crumbs from off anybody's table. Where we shall live by the dictates of the old Ghana empire. Where everybody is substantially rich. Today, anybody coming from America, even if they were so much of paupers, when they arrive in this country, we see them to be rich. Every white man is rich. True? That is why all your daughters want to marry white people. All your daughters. If you bring the most brilliant medical doctor Ghanaian here and put the most foolish white man here, your daughters will go after the foolish white man. Because they have been programmed upstairs that everything black is demonic and everything white is right. How many of you believe that God is white? How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is white? How many of you even believe that Muhammad is white? Anything that is so good must automatically be white. Think about it, brethren. We need to degrade and disintegrate this mental shackles from out of our minds. It's mental slavery. It's brainwashed education. It's bad programming. It's demonic programming. It's the black pot. A.K.A. Koko Shonemo. And here we speak truth to power. Next worry, my youth. Ablakwa gives up on Reverend Kusi Boatin. Reverend Kusi Boatin was my mate at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He was a few years ahead of me. He is a man of God. He's respected so much in such countries as Zimbabwe. He is rich. He has sons, I mean, followers and mentees in other countries who own private jets. So they call him Papa. Recently, it came out that he's actually a corrupt man of God. He has two names, two different names, two different mothers, two different tin numbers. Tax identification numbers is illegal in Ghana. If you have those two, you can evade tax in one way or the other. How they do it, I won't pretend to know. He also used companies that he registered under his businesses to be able to take money from the government whilst he is secretly in bed with the government in power. It took one man to go underground and expose this man of God with a double face. Samuel Okujato, the bald-headed Ablakwa. That's him. I love this brother. Yes, that's him. He's an MP. For some time now, he's been a little quiet, and I was wondering. The matter went to court, and Reverend Kusibuatin was told that it was wrong for him to bear two names, two different names, and have two different mothers, two different deaths of birth. That's a criminal. 
He tried to get Ablakwa jailed. He tried to get the court to stop Ablakwa, but the court said, no, our hands are tied. We are using the law. Not even his political lineage and leanings could help him. He was the secretary of the infamous cathedral, so-called National Cathedral. And this was what they wanted it to be. But at the end of the day, it has become a huge gutter breeding mosquitoes and tadpoles. This design alone cost Ghana an arm and a leg. It was given to a guy by name Se Ajayi. Se Ajayi or Ajayi, my brother, my sister, is Ghanaian British. He lives in England where he was knighted by the Queen of England. He was the one who was given this. His father was a diplomat in the days of Kwame Nkrumah. He himself was born in Tanzania. His father moved all the way to Syria and some other such places with him as a little child following a diplomat father. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was the one giving this contract. How did he get the contract? Through the president's cousin. Who is the president's cousin? Gabi Asari Ochredakun. They call him the pseudo prime minister of the country. He's the one running this country, we are told. My brother, my sister, Ablakwa is saying that he has now given up. This cathedral was full of corruption and a lot of the well-meaning pastors, bishops, archbishops, prophets, all decided to wash their hands off and resigned, including Eastwood Anaba, Archbishop Duncan Williams, and more. All because of this man here called Reverend Kusi Boateng. I give up. Abra Ablakwa reacts to Kusi Boateng's 250 million US dollar to complete National Cathedral. The Member of Parliament for North Tongue, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, has expressed helplessness about the purported amount of money that can be used to complete the National Cathedral project. I give up. Ablakwa uh, tweeted on March 7, 2024, with an accompanying screenshot of a new story about the project needing 250 million more to secure completion. The figure was advanced by Reverend Victor Kusi Boateng, member and secretary to the Board of Trustees of the project, which has stalled over funding challenges, according to the Secretariat. In an interview on Onuya FM on March 7, 2024, Kusi Boateng stressed the need for the faithful to look at the advantages that will accrue to the nation upon completion. That's your tower. So bring the photo of Kusi Boateng. He was my mate at Tia Mother Secondary School, a few years ahead of me. He was from a very poor home, and therefore his student days were very difficult, like most of us. He used to sleep in verandas and all that we were told. And he was very prayerful. He was uplifted to the glory of God, the God that he served. But when he got higher and higher, he decided to be corrupt. He decided to deal with criminals. Two names, two different days of birth to swindle the system. A black one brought that up. Now this man here is saying that the faithfuls, in other words the Christians and people who believe in God, donate money so that we complete this project. Meanwhile, this man is a super millionaire. Ask him how much he himself has donated. This man here is a dirty guy. He has sons and daughters across the world who can donate the 250 million if he wishes. But he's here busily using government connections to siphon money from the government for his own selfish pot bellied wishes and whims and caprices. I'm angry. They use the Bible against the poor. That's why a lot of people have refused to be Christian. It's annoying to be Christian in Ghana. He is sitting on gold. 
He flies around the world in chartered planes. He has sons that he has raised spiritually. My brother, his mentees in simple language who own private jets in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, and all those places. Victor Kusi Boateng, only niece, to line up all his mentees and tell them, I need you guys to raise 250 million American dollars within this period. Take me out of shame. Let me build it to the glory of God. They are going to do it. But no, he would prefer that if any money like that is to be raised, it should come to him so that he will enjoy the glory rather than donating it to a nation. But they are quick to come and tell poor people, oh, faithfuls, you know your reward is in heaven. You have to donate. You know how purposeful this thing is. You are going to really enjoy. God is going to bless you and blah, blah, blah. The blessing they are looking for from God, you have it already. If I were this man, that's what I would do. If I were this man, all the numerous mentees that I have, those who fly private jets, one, two, and more, how much is 250 million? How much is that? Let's say that you have 100 mentees. That means each one of them is going to pay how much? 25,000 American dollars. That's cheap money. Am I, am I right? Or is it, is it 25,000? So that's 250 million divided by 100. So you take two zeros out. Yes, about 250,000. They can do that to the glory of God. I like such challenges, but no. They rather would be chasing the government for huge contracts. COVID came. This guy had a huge contract from the government to provide PPEs and some other such things so that he made the money. And when they are giving them such contracts, they bloat the thing. Boof. What an ordinary man like me and you can do for 10 Ghana cities, they take a million cities to do that. It's crazy. Dash it away. These are the people who make worshipping God very, very distasteful and so disgraceful. And I say it time and again. I don't care who you are. It's all about Ghana. When we return, come here, my youth. We got more. Hey! Wayo! countrymen my name black rasta when i was growing up as a child there was something called the courtesy for boys and girls that helped to train us and raise us up in patriotism but today a lot of this patriotism has been lost today our children are beginning to lose everything in terms of our heritage they have lost out on our history lost out on our greatness it is on the bedrock of this. I am embarking on a nationwide tour of patriotism. Remember, it's patriotism, not politics. We shall go to all the 16 regions of Ghana. And in every region, we will organize students and speak to them about patriotism. We will organize a small quiz competition where we shall give prizes out. And these prizes are going to be prizes that are souvenirs from Ghana. Right after that, we will organize a setting concert either in the market space or even on the streets, accessible to everybody. And we will catch the music lovers 
and deliver the same message to them. It's on the bedrock of this. I would like you to be part of this. Please donate to this great cause. We are raising a next generation of patriots. It's the lack of patriotism that is making us steal from our own country. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us feel like when we steal from the government, we are stealing from space. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us owe allegiance to some foreigners more than us. It's the lack of patriotism that makes foreigners come into this country and behave like demigods and we see them as such. My brother, my sister, donate so we can move out there. Maybe you want to give us something else in kind. We are ready for you. Our numbers are rolling on the screens and you can donate into our bank account or onto our phone number and we will gladly appreciate and acknowledge you. This is the national patriotism tour that we have taken on ourselves to make sure that the nation, Ghana, stands tall again like before. My name is Black Rasta and I thank you for listening. God bless you. Ghana shall prosper. Ghana will rise again. Bless you. Mr. Blackport, bless you. Continue to donate. We are making serious strides. You will be proud of this. My name is Black Rasta. And time now to check out your messages. Okay. So send your messages in. And let's see what I go on. Zacha Emmanuel, a.k.a. Governor, all the way from Wusuta, says, Welcome, Daddy. And he says, My money no show. Okay, so, um, okay, so what name was the money in? When did you send it? Uh, kindly send us a message and then we will know. I mean, if it didn't show, then it means that we didn't receive it, but I'm sure that it should be there. When did you send it? Is it yesterday? If it's yesterday, then you will see it by tomorrow. Yeah? Zach Emmanuel, what name did you use? Uh, send us a message via 024 499 Yes, 024 499 That's our official number. You can send a WhatsApp message and say that you sent the money and it didn't come. You can also send us a, 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 a screenshot. Whatever it is, we'll check it out. But look, look at the, at the I mean, names down there. I'm sure that your name is going to show. Yes, I think I saw a name like, like, like that. So it should be in the list. Look at the list properly. Mohammed Banjia 1, the hot pot of wisdom is here. Teach, my vibrant brethren. Blessed love and respect to you and Allah. And all the crew, yes, all the crew, yes, for the good work. Oh, yo, signed MC Scorpion. And I want to say Ramadan Mubarak to all Muslims who started fast today. Continue. Now, Jennifer Asukumami says, Asukamami, Asukamami says, Greetings, Black Rasta. Ja, watch up on you. Blessed. Odum says, welcome, Black. This Doom saw is really disturbing. And he says, we can't enjoy the Black Pot at the normal time. Sad. Danny Man says, as kingmakers, it should be within our reach to point uh, the people to point the people to the right direction. John the Baptist uh, pointed the people to Jesus. They, 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 uh, they were saved because he didn't labor, of course. That is right. That is why we continue saying that this is not good and that is not good. We need to look out for this and look out for that. That is what we keep doing. Agbo Benjamin says, my prophets preach. My prophet preach on. Where are the celebrities who went rampage about Doom in 2016? Have they finally lost their voices or sense of demonstration? Posterity will judge them all. And he says, uh, suck out of lyrics. Suck out of lyrics. Ah, well. Kojo Wanfu says, blessed love, I say it as it is says. I understand it's patriotism, but that's what happens when leaders impoverish the citizens. Flacco Harlem TV says, respect, Mr. Black. Happy Ramadan to you. Same to you, Flacco Harlem. And then, uh, Abayeleme, Abayeleme, 
Christopher says, Doom saw started way back in Kufo's era. Remember, he bust pastors, prophets, and prophetesses to the Akosombo Dam for prayers instead of bringing a power plant like what President Mahama did. Yes, I agree with you. Kufuo did that, but in the days of Kufuo, it was the Akosombo that was running out of water, and they went to pray for rain to fall so that Akosombo would have, at that, at that time, Akosombo was still able, saying, come here, my youth. Akosombo was still able to take care of the whole Ghana. That's the difference. We were still depending on Akosombo. Now we don't. We were still depending on Akosombo. And when the rays were not falling and the dam ran out of water, doom so set in. So he sent pastors and the rest of them to pray for rain. He didn't go there to pray so that the turbans will run. No. Rain to fall so that Dumso could be sorted out. But we have grown beyond rain-fed Akosombo Dam. We have grown as a nation several folds after Kufuo came and left. In the days of Nkrumah, Akosombo Dam was feeding everybody with electricity for almost free. What was the population of Ghana? Today the population has increased and we were still trying to depend on Akosombo. It was the Mahama government, in fact, the Atamil's government, that came in with another option aside Akosombo. The power plants generated right here in Ghana and beyond. And when you go to the Enzima area, it is there. And you can see that. But after that, they had to ship in a lot of gas to be able to deal with Dumso. And in Mohammed's tenure of office, it worsened. It monumentally worsened. From rain-fed Akosombo Dam all the way down to putting away Akosombo Dam is very expensive. It's a fundamental change. I hope you understand. You are used to rain-fed. Right now, Akosombo Dam couldn't take it anymore. So, they decided to come in with the turbines and so on and so forth. And the transformers. So, in Bahamas tenure of office, it wasn't. But they were able to bring in Ameri power and the rest of it to be able to ameliorate. Yes, ameliorate the situation. But that couldn't even keep them in power. People were so fed up because Dumso had lasted for so long. And Mahama was kicked out, amongst other reasons. The people who said they were going to cancel the Ameri deal and so on and so forth, rather came and extended it. At least it sorted out the Dumso energy. They didn't just give credit to the government that brought the Ameri. Condemned it and said they would remove Ameri, but they only came to be hypocritical enough to extend it. At least it saved the nation. It meant that Muhammad did something good, at least. And today, they can't buy gas because they have run down the economy. We can't pardon them for this. The transformers are there, but you can't buy gas. Why? In the days of Atamils, they had to build new transformers. Buy! Bring foreigners to come and train Ghanaians. A Tuyabo gas plant, it provides the whole nation with electricity, not the Akosombo Dam. Akosombo has played its role. role. It's still playing some role. So that's what it is. Yeah? Are we done with all the messages? All right. Next to Arimayot. Keep your messages coming in. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate you and we love you. Ajua Safu denies E Levy private jet. Is this the last story? Come here. Let's deal with the last story. You remember Ajua Safu went all the way to America. She said that her family first, and therefore she abandoned the Ministry of Women, Children, and Social Welfare and Gender, whatever it was, and went to America. The president was so, 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 so embarrassed. He sacked her after so much agitations. But when it was time to vote for their demonic e levy, she found herself in a chartered flight that brought her to Ghana to come and vote 
amid so much controversies. Today, Ajua Safo is saying something else. What is she saying? She's the MP, the rejected MP for Domi Kwabinya. They said she betrayed them and she behaved so arrogantly, they don't want to see her face. They kicked her out. So she won't be their MP in the next elections. It is not true. Ajua Safo dismisses claims that she was picked up by a private jet from U.S. to Ghana. Run it, my youth. Member of Parliament for Domingo Abenya, Sarah Ajua Safo, has dismissed allegations by Kennedy and Japan. A fellow MP, not just a fellow MP, her baby father, Kennedy Japan, is the father to Ajua Safo's baby. So he's not just a fellow MP. He was the one who told us that she was flown into the country in a private jet. They brought the same private jet to bring him from America and he refused because it was going to drain the taxpayers' money. So he came in a commercial flight. Member of Parliament for Domingo Kwabenya, Sarah Ajua Safo, has dismissed allegations by Kennedy Japan, a fellow MP, that a private jet flew her from the United States to Ghana. She disclosed that Kennedy Japan had apologized to her and invited journalists to come to parliament and interview him on the matter. The, ma the member of parliament further denied other accusations against her by Canada Japan, labeling them as falsehoods. One of the cleared up allegations included claims that Chief of Staff Akosua Frema Osei Opari provided her with 120,000 Ghana cities and she demanded to be appointed deputy majority leader before attending parliament during the time she was absent in the chamber. Speaking in an interview on Onuya FM on uh, March 11, uh, 2024, she discredited these allegations and urged Ghanaians to verify the information before spreading it. She stressed the importance of caution and diligence in discerning the truth. Nana, all those things are not true. That shit away. Bring her just for here. This is your baby father. He said he collected the money himself and paid that into your Fidelity bank account. He said he collected the money. 120,000 Ghana paid into your account. He said that he saw the private jet that picked you up from America and brought you to Ghana. He was so angry with you you never came out to debunk these things at the time he said it. You had the opportunity to do that. You came and lost an election. And today, you are trying to do damage control. That's a shame. I believe Kennedy Japan. If Kennedy Japan actually apologized to you, I know he's a man of his words. He would come out and tell the whole world that this is not true. This thing you have said, you have woken up the lion. Canada Japan is going to come after you. And he will say that he didn't lie. That you sat in a private jet, demanded to be made deputy speaker, and also demanded that you be paid some monies before you come to parliament to vote. After all, you told us your family first. So unashamedly, the Ghana first has now become my family first. That shall we. That shall we. It's the black pot, aka Kukushu Nemo, where we speak truth to power. Come here, my youth. And I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you and I love you for coming. Let's look at your final messages and we are done for the day. All right? Okay. So here, Benjamin Achu says, Bless. Danny Man says, Yes, Ambassador of Patriotism, finally. Danny Man says, How can we blame Mahama for excess power and then turn back? to lament on supply shortage. Shake my head. Well, in Mohammed's tenure of office, we had doom so. We all saw it. It's true, it's not hidden. They had to rise to the occasion and try to sort it out. Too late, they were able to get it. People were already angry and kicked them out of power. We must accept that. But they laid the foundations to be able to give us power. Now, we are not able to continue with that because we have no money to pay for the gas. Is that all we have for the messages? 
I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you and I love you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shounamu, where we speak truth to power. We will try to always come at 5 p.m. if we don't have doom so issues and all that. If we come later, it means that we are having doom so issues. I think I have to close quickly before doom so hits me. Hey! Wayo! Kwa <laughs> kwa <laughs>